hope you're well. Uh, second instalment of the new channel. Um, I gave you a little bit of an insight first time round as the kind of things that I'm interested in. Uh, lots and lots of stuff actually, far too many really to uh, to give you a long list of the sort of things that I'm interested in. Um, but the Fixed Wing channel uh, kind of is going to cover a whole gamut of things hopefully that might be of interest to lots of people out there. The name of the channel might give you a little bit of a clue. Uh, Fixed Wing channel, I am a avid pilot. Um, light aircraft, uh, love them to bits, um, very, very bad safety record, but uh, what's life without a little bit of risk? Uh, apart from longer, maybe, who knows? Um, other than that, uh, love wrist watches, absolutely love wrist watches. Whether I'm a an absolute enthusiast, I don't think so. And I'm certainly not a watch snob. And that's kind of one of the things that I want to talk about today, um, which is watch snobbery. Um, a number of other people have touched on this. Um, and I think the key thing to try to remember, uh, and I think um, Andy Hunter um, and uh, Guido Pelagos, etc. have said this kind of thing over and over again. For me, it's not about spending a lot of money. Um, it's not about having a particular brand uh, on your wrist. Uh, that is a lot of echo between uh, kind of here in the UK. Um, do you want to drive a Ford Mondeo? Uh, I think it's called the Ford Fusion in America. Um, or a uh, BMW 3 Series. Now, very, very similar cars. Uh, four seats, one front wheel drive, one rear wheel drive. Um, you can get them in petrol, you can get them in diesel, you can do two litre versions and so on and so forth. Very, very similar cars. Um, the Ford Mondeo tends to be slightly nicer fitted out. Um, it has a good interior, etc. And a good build quality. But there's a lot of people out there who would prefer to spend more money on buying the BMW. Why? The badge. Well, same thing with watches, I guess, to a certain extent. Let's break it down right to the essentials. What is a watch? Well, a watch to a certain extent is there, as it should be, for its original idea to tell the time. How many of us use it to tell the time? Well, over the last five or ten years, maybe, less and less. Lots and lots of people, especially young people, use their phones, which is fine. Um, but personally, I feel naked without a watch. Um, I've felt naked without two things throughout my life. One is my wristwatch, and two, always carry a pen knife, pocket knife, that kind of thing. Um, don't know why, uh, just do. Um, I can't go out of the house without something on my wrist and I can't go out of the house without a, a knife on my belt or in my pocket or, or somewhere like that. So what I'm trying to get at here is, is that it's very, very important to buy what you like. Now, I have watches in my collection that cost me 30, 40, 50 pounds. Wow, you say. Well, they must be a load of crap. Well. Um, they, in my eyes, satisfied a need at that time. Needless to say, um, they're not high-end. Needless to say, uh, they're not made out of titanium. Needless to say, they don't have diamonds. But they are good-looking watches. And I'll show you a few more bits and pieces about my watch collection in other videos. Um, so don't let anybody ever tell you that you need to spend hundreds and hundreds stroke thousands of pounds to get something that you like on your wrist. If you're one of these people that will um, want one watch, solely one watch, um, which you're going to wear come rain, come shine, it doesn't matter what it is, but it has to be a, a good quality watch, then that's fine. Then save up and buy yourself your Omega Seamaster as is the love of the life of Andy Hunter, uh, buy yourself a Submara from Rolex, by all means do that, even if it's one of the prestige brands that are kind of looked down on, and I don't understand why, um, your tags of this world, the Oris of this world, that kind of thing, if it's something like that that flicks your switch, then brilliant, go out, buy it, get it sized, put it on your wrist, and be proud, be proud of the watch that you've bought, because it's your watch, it's an extension of 
your personality. It's something that you've worked hard for. It's something that you've saved for. And, and it's something you've achieved. So don't let anybody tell you that this is what you need to buy. Just don't do that. It is it, it, your car and your watch are the, the only two things that really that men have to a certain extent, I guess, that, that can push forward our um, image, maybe. I, I don't know. Um, so do what's right for you. Don't do what's right for others. Don't look for affirmation from other uh, so-called watch experts. I don't um, claim to be a watch expert, but what I do claim to be is sensible. And I know what I like. There are some watches out there that are 150, 200 pounds, which are delightful to look at. And when you break watches down to kind of the bare minimum, let, let, let's get it straight. They're all mostly made out of 316L surgical steel. Okay, tick. They all have a dial, tick. Mostly black, sometimes blue, sometimes rarely other colours, silver, whites, variations, yellows, that kind of thing. Tick. They all have fingers. Tick. Some are chronograph. Tick. Some are just chronometers. Tick. So, other things that they have, okay. Um, a strap. Leather. Plastic. Rubber. Doesn't matter. Silicon. New craze. Uh, bracelet. Uh, different link styles, H-band, you name it, um, grain of rice, bracelets, so on and so forth. So when you break it down, the only thing that's different between all of these types of watches is the movement. Now, the movement is what people hold a lot of stock in, but the movement is inside the watch. It's invisible. It, it doesn't really make a whole world of difference to, G, to the general public, to be perfectly honest, because they have no idea. The only thing that, that will make the difference where the movement is concerned is to other watch lovers and watch snobs. There you go. So what I'm saying is it doesn't really matter whether you go out and buy a Rolex Submariner for 10 grand, 15 grand, or whether you go out and buy a, an Invicta, which I know Andy Hunter hates, but I think it's a good looking watch. And if you love the style of a Rolex Submariner, then maybe, maybe the Invicta is the way to go. So go out and buy what you like, wear what you like, and the kind of thing that you think will look good and feel right on your wrist. If you go out and buy something for 100 quid, if it doesn't feel right for any reason, or you decide you don't like it, and you can't sell it on, then you're not really going to bankrupt yourself by that decision. So do what's right for you. Watches at the end of the day are going to be quite polarizing. I've seen Archie say that um, a watch, the purchase of a watch should make you feel as though you've been kicked in the nuts. Well, really Archie? I, I don't understand that. Uh, I'm on a restricted income, as are most people. Um, when I buy a watch, it's to make me feel a little bit better about the world. The world can be a fairly dreadful place, I guess, to certain people. I myself am disabled, but that's I don't care about that. You live your life around your capabilities and you live your life around what you can afford to live your life. So don't get yourself in hock. Don't build up a massive great big uh, credit card bill. Just do what's right for you and more importantly, your bank account. More about watches as we go along. I'll cover uh, the kind of watches I own, uh, my foundation piece, which will never, never leave my uh, watch box. Um, the first watch I bought, which absolutely bankrupted me, but I love it to pieces. It was in a window in a jeweler's in 1978, and it was crying out to be bought, and I pushed myself and pushed myself to buy it. And as I say, it nearly bankrupted myself. But I guess for now, that's kind of it. It's enough for the second video. Um, hopefully, uh, it gives you a, uh, a brief idea of who I am, where I'm coming from. Uh, lots and lots of interests I will talk about over time. And by all means, get in touch if you have any questions. So that's it for now. I'll speak to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.